quarter report cards are out. They're available on Hack. So hopefully at this point, students, you have gotten a hard paper copy of your report card from your first period teacher. Um, so if everyone can take a look at this, I just want to go over very briefly what you're looking at. So you're going to see your, all of your classes in that top section there. You're going to see all of your first quarter grades. And then the section underneath where your classes are listed, you're going to see service learning hours. It will tell you how many you have left to do. And those hours will need to be done by May of your senior year. So that'll give you an idea on where you're at. Underneath the service learning hours is information about your state testing, whether or not you've met those requirements. And to be honest, a lot of times if you haven't met the requirements, it's just because you haven't tested yet in a certain area. But that gives you a good idea of where you're at. Then below that on the left hand side is information about your attendance. It tells you how many days you've missed, how many days you've come in late, what's legal, illegal absences. So you have an idea of where you stand. Keep in mind you can't miss more than 16 days. So make sure you're, you're taking notice of that. Um, all the way to the right on the bottom is information about our grading scale. What constitutes an A, B, that kind of thing. Um, um, and then you'll see information about your GPA in the middle of the page on the bottom. So if we want to flip to the next slide, there we go. All right, this is Miss Sinclair and I'm going to talk to you about how you're going to earn your credits for the year. What does it mean when you're going to pass a full year class or a semesterized class? So when you look at each quarter, you're going to add up the numbers that appear there. Right now you only have one, but as we go through the year, you're gonna receive a grade each quarter. For a full year class, you need to receive a 240 or higher to pass the class, okay? So if you take 240 and divide that by four, you're looking at you need to 60 each quarter or depending upon what kind of grade you get, you're gonna be able to kind of judge what you're gonna need. For a semester class, such as a PE class, health, financial lit, any of those two quarter classes, you need to get 120 points to pass the semester class. So if you look in the second little block there, for a full year, I can get a 70 first quarter. If you look at what you got right now, that's gonna tell you where if you're headed in a good direction. But even if I have a 70 first quarter, if I end up second and third quarter getting a 50, and then I get a 32 in the third quarter or fourth quarter, you can see it adds up to 202 points. Even though I did well first quarter, I ended up not passing and earning that credit. Okay. In the other instance, maybe I didn't have such a great first quarter, but then I start improving because I know I really want to get my credits and make sure I pass for the year. I got a 50 first quarter, then I bumped it up, I got to a 65, I got a 70 and 70 in the last two quarters. I end up with a 255 and that means I passed. OK, so you need to make sure that you're kind of paying attention to where you stand for that full year class on that 240 points because even if you where you stand right now is a good indicator but you have to make sure that you're at that place um, to be moving forward towards that 240. again for the semesterized classes you need to get 120 i could have a 70 the first quarter and then i get a 40 the second quarter of my class and i still only have 110 points that means i don't pass i could have a 50 this quarter if I get a 70 or higher in the second quarter, then I would pass because I would have over 120 points. One of the things we want to make sure you remember is that the first, second, and third quarters of a full year class, you receive at least a 50%. So even if you earned a um, 48, you would get a 50 on your report card. What you need to remember, the major thing is that the fourth quarter is you get the grade you earn. If you do nothing and you only get a 10 or a 12, that's what will show up on your report card. So if I am in a place where I'm going to have a 50, 50, 50 for the first three quarters, I need to get a 90% to be able to pass the class and earn that credit. 
there's no bump in the last quarter of the class you're taking. In the same sense, for your semester class, the first quarter, you'll get that 50% at minimum. The second quarter, since it's the last one, is going to be no bump. So in this second quarter, if you're in PE, health, financial lit right now, you will not just get a 50. You will get the grade that you earn. So you need to make sure that you're going to have that goal. Whatever you got first quarter, subtract that from 120, and that is the minimum that you can get to pass that class. We just wanted to make sure that you knew the math so you can be figuring this out and have goals for yourself. Obviously, we want to be way above 240 or 120, but make sure you're paying attention to how you're doing. And remember that fourth quarter, you get the grade that you earn. Thanks. Hi, this is Miss Harris. Um, just quickly. Uh, just passing does not necessarily make you eligible for sports. So what you need for sports is when you add up those numbers like Miss Sinclair just showed you, you have to average a 70%. So I gave an example as she did. If, see everyone, if you add up all seven classes and you divide it by seven, that person only got a 67%. Now, they followed the rule that you only got one F and you passed everything else. However, their overall average wasn't 70. On the flip side, if you get um, a whole bunch of 80s and 90s, but two Fs, even if you're over 70%, you're not eligible. So it's those two elements. You have to have over 70% GPA and no more than one F on your report card. And that is by quarter. So let's say you're looking at your report card right now and say, oh no, um, I want to play basketball and, and this is the issue. Well, interim can save your GPA. So if by interim, you then have those marks, a 70 and no more than one F, then you all of a sudden become eligible. The flip side is if you're already in basketball because you had a solid first quarter report card or track, whatever you choose, um, then you're, you're okay even if your interim wasn't what you wanted it to be. So interims can save you in terms of eligibility, but they can't make you ineligible. Only report cards make you ineligible. If you have any other questions, please see myself or Mr. Cranford. The next thing we want to talk about is GPA. So again, your GPA is listed in that little box in the bottom middle of your report card. And you're going to see two different GPA. Well, actually, you'll see three different GPAs on your report card. The first one on the very top, and I'm going out of order from my slide, guys. I'm sorry. But the, the if you look at your report card, the first one you'll see on the top in the GPA section is, Miss Harris, can you flip back? Okay, thank you. Um, one more, one more forward. There we go. Uh, the, on your report card, the one that's listed at the top is your current GPA. This is the one that's going to be used for athletic eligibility, for honor roll, all that kind of stuff. So the current GPA is just based on your grades for that report card. So right now your current GPA is just based on your first quarter grades. So again, that's what, what you use for athletic eligibility, honor roll, all that kind of stuff. Um, the next GPA that's listed is your year to date. Um, and you'll see this is on a 4.0 scale. So this is just your year to date based on each academic year. So right now this is just on a 4.0 scale what your GPA would be based on your first quarter grades. Then the bottom one is cumulative. This is the really big and important one. This is the overall average for those of you who are in grades other than ninth grade. This is the running total of all of your quarters of high school. So it's an average of all the grades that you've ever had in high school. So for freshmen, everything for you guys is going to be the same because this is your first high school report card. But upperclassmen, this cumulative GPA is going to keep being averaged every single time you get report cards. And this, guys, is the very big number. So this is what colleges are going to look at. This is what, you know, NCAA is going to look at. This is what employers is going to look at, the military, all of those things. So this is the big number. When someone asks you what your GPA is, that cumulative is what you're going to give them. And Mr. Verrill is just going to talk about a little bit more information for us now. Hey, good morning. 
I wanted to talk to you first, I guess, about what you need to do to move on to the next grade. And I know for mo you know, for everybody, that's always the big thing at the end of the year is I want to be in the next grade. And it's pretty simple. It's laid out here um, to move from ninth to 10th grade for the ninth graders. At the end of the year, you need to earn five credits this year, have a cumulative total of five credits, and you need to have passed ninth grade English. You know, so both of those things need to happen. If you have five credits but don't pass English, you'll still be considered a ninth grader at the end of the year, and you would need to go to summer school, take English nine, if you want to be considered a 10th grader for the following year. To move from 10th to 11th, you need 11 credits, and you need to have passed English both years. And then to move from 11th to 12th, you need 17 credits, and you need to have 9th, 10th, and 11th grade English. And I guess the final thing is at the end of it all, you need to have earned 23 and a half credits in all the, the specific specified areas uh, to graduate. So that's something to be conscious of. Um, you know, for current ninth graders who just started this year, you're going to need to earn 24 credits. That's something that just changed over the summer. And you'll need to earn a full credit of, of health versus a half a credit of health for everybody else. So just keep that in mind. Um, if we could go to the next slide. And then if you did not have a successful first quarter, again, you could still get your grades up to the level that will allow you to pass. Um, you know, I'm sure some of you are, are looking at report cards and you're, you're ecstatic and some are looking at report cards and are probably aren't too happy. Um, but you could definitely fix that. You know, every quarter is, is a new quarter. You start fresh. You know, I like to, used to like to tell my students, you know, it, it's a new quarter. You have an A in the class, you know, and from here it, it's sort of in your, um, you know, it's what you do for the next nine weeks. It's going to determine that grade at the next report card, you know, and then at the end, that's all going to add up. Um, the quarter matters. Your cumulative GPA is, I think Ms. Pawnee said, is what's reported when, you, when you're applying to colleges or scholarships. And when we send out your transcript, which is a record of all your classes, the only thing that shows up on your transcript is your end of the year average. So if you have a bad quarter in there, that's not necessarily going to show up. You know, it's that end of the year average. So if you had a bad grade, you know, work hard to sort of balance that out and get your grades up for the end of the year. And then how do we calculate GPA down at the bottom? And th this is sort of a little bit of a, um, a deceiving scale. So most kids think on a four point scale, um, an A is four, a B is three, a C is two, a D is one, and an F is zero. And that, that's sort of true, but how they calculate it is a little bit more detailed. And so we're going to go to the next slide. And this is, it's a little more precise. So I want you to, you know, sort of be conscious of this. So if you have a, you know, I know a lot of kids say, well, I have a 3.0, I have an 80 average. So an 80 in a regular class is not a, a 3.0, it's a 2.7, and you can see that. Um, and you can see there's small incremental changes, um, you know, as you move up the scale. So really be conscious of that. That's something that's also reported out. It's at the bottom of your transcript, so colleges could see, um, or scholarships, employers, they could see, you know, what the scale is we use to calculate. And I know too, this is to put a plug in for taking AP classes. You can see that AP really counts a lot more when, when you're figuring out GPA. It adds a whole extra point to your GPA. You know, so anything from a 93 to 100 in a regular class is a 4.0. In an AP, it's a 5. So if you're taking a bunch of AP classes, you know, you could get your GPA above a 4.0. And we see that a lot of times. You know, as kids move on to later grades, um, you know, I think right now the highest GPA in the senior class is probably about 4.4. And that's because some, you know, kids have been taking a lot of APs over the years. So just just something to keep in mind, you know, as you're working on building your academic resume. So I think that's about it for us for today. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to your counselors um, and we'd be happy to try to help you or answer any questions you have. Have a great Friday. Sports teams, good luck this weekend, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you back on here soon. See you later. Have a great day, guys.